Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out the Seed Studio Recomputer Jetson 10. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Seed Studio for sending this over to me and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now this is called the Recomputer case. This case actually allows for multiple different types of SBCs to be installed in this one single case, which I think looks really cool. This one is actually installed with the Jetson Nano. That's why it's called the Recomputer Jetson Nano 10. While I actually do have another case right here, which is the blue version. And this one is the Odyssey X86. This one also has a clear acrylic top versus this one is just black. And and basically the front plate and the back plate gets replaced and then you could stick in another board. Now this version of it don't have the front plate, it only has the back plate. So yeah, there's two different types of recomputer cases. Now for the case itself, this can actually stand vertically or desktop style. It actually has four holes on top for antenna inputs or outputs. And the lid itself is made of this black acrylic where it's held down by these little magnetic tape. And it's got plenty of breathing room. If you look underneath, there's tons of holes. Again, if you want to fit other boards in here like a Raspberry Pi or whatever, you, you just need to replace the back plate and screw it down. Now for the Jetson Nano, this is the newer version of their Jetson Nano. And this actually is the first time I'm playing with a Nano. This Jetson Nano has 128 CUDA cores with the ARM 4 core CPU clocked at 1.43 gigahertz. Four gigs of RAM, 16 gigabyte of BMMC, gigabit ethernet, and comes shipped with Ubuntu 18.04. Now talking about the Jetson Nano, in the back you have the barrel connector, then you have HDMI display port, four ports USB 3, ethernet, and then a micro USB. Now that micro USB allows you for power input for low power mode. So you actually could power this off by five volts. And there's a setting inside the desktop where it allows you to change it to low power mode, which will reduce the four cores to two cores using much less power. Now, with that said, it's limited to only five watts of power when you're running through the USB port. But while running a demo in full power mode, I only saw upwards of close to seven, between seven and 10. So I didn't really see that much of a power draw when I was running their CUDA core demos. Now jumping on top of the board, you got 40 pin GPIO and don't trust this to be the same as Raspberry Pi, so it's slightly different. Then you have two uh, CSI camera inputs. So you could actually use this for some sort of image recognition or something like that. So you do have camera inputs. Underneath the board, you get two M.2s, one for E key and one for M key. So if you need extra storage, you can put that in here. The E key is actually disabled by default. You could enable it inside the system. So if you want to run Wi-Fi on this guy, you could use that. And that's about it for the hardware aspects. Now jumping into the desktop, again, you get presented with 1804 and it do come with some demos. Now you can actually download a bunch of their other demos and libraries to see what you want to play around with. But for um, a great, great test, which is their remap demo right over here. If I open this MP4, which is just a picture of a dog, you can see it's doing some live effects. It's doing it right now using the CUDA cores to process this whole information. Now if I was to reduce this to a CPU, you could see how it lags. And you could use VIC and CPU. I'm not sure what the VIC is, but yeah, it's much smoother. As soon as you have CUDA cores running in, it runs perfectly fine. They also have another demo right over here, which is the VPI stereo. And let me open this up. Again, this runs really good using CUDA cores. I'm not a crazy CUDA core programmer or developer, so I wouldn't even know how to do half of this stuff, uh, but they do have demos. Now, if you jump into their Jetson Zoo, which is their link over here, uh, jump in into Chrome and you can see it actually works pretty quick. As a desktop itself, you could probably use this for a little bit of a desktop, light work, but not really like replacing your desktop type thing. Uh, I'm inside their Jetson Zoo and you could see they actually have a bunch of examples for PyTorch. Well, they have PyTorch in here, how to install it. They have other projects in here as well, um, how to do certain things like image recognition, uh, AWS, DeepStream. Um, so they give you like a bunch of tools in the um, Jetson Zoo area. And the uh, development zone right over here, they actually give you a bunch of projects uh, that's already developed for the Jetson Nano. So you could actually jump in here and I don't know, figure out what you want to do with this board. To be honest, I have a few programs that I like to use with PyTorch, which changes like regular video to like slow motion and stuff like that. I would probably try to use this board for that. It takes like a little bit more development because I have no idea how to like get that working with the CUDA cores yet. So 
that's going to take some time, but imagine I could get some something working with that and get my slow motion videos. Anyway, as far as the desktop goes, uh, I am going to do, let me see, do we have nano fetch, neo fetch, sudo app install neo fetch. Oh, there's a lot of things that need to be updated on this guy. All right, so looking into NeoFetch, you could see this is running 1804.5, Jetson Nano, 64-bit. Uh, it's running on 4.9 kernel, which is a little bit older, but it's on Tegra. Um, we also are running on uh, 1.479 gigahertz. I apologize. I mean, it, it's 1.749, and it has 4 gigs of RAM. As far as storage, it doesn't tell you here, but I could go df-h and it'll show you size is 14 gigs, which is 16 gigs if you like do the math on that. So yeah, now I've seen cases where people would upgrade this to 20.04, successful cases, but it's not fully supported by NVIDIA, so I would just leave it on 18.04. I've never seen any storage yet on upgrading this to 22.04, but I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference unless you plan to use that later operating system for something else. 18.04 runs fine for development processes. Anyway, that is it. I don't have much demonstrations on this because I haven't installed anything on here that I could convert to using CUDA or if needs to. I don't even know if I could just run PyTorch and it would work. I'm very new to this type of development board, so I do want to play around with it a little bit more. And if you guys do own it or know of anything that you could do that's particularly fun on this, I'll leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.